All right, so unit one, section one, one point one. Uh, we're gonna start with SI prefixes, and then we're gonna get into some uh, conversions a little later. All right, so um, SI stands for System International. That is the kind of base science science governing body that says this is what we're gonna use. So um, all these SI prefixes are the same ones used by scientists all around the world. Okay. Now when I say prefix. Prefix. What is a prefix? Just, just in terms of English, what is a prefix? Where does it go? In front of a word. In front of a word, right? So if the word is stoppable, right, what's a prefix that could go with that? Unstoppable. Unstoppable, right? Un is the prefix, right? If the word's possible, what's a prefix that could go with that? Impossible. Impossible, right? Okay. So the prefix is something that goes in front. Okay. Now in, in English, it's a just any old word. You know, like stoppable or destructible or possible or um, let's, let's see, extend extent of my prefix was right there. All right. Let's see, anti one social anti social right anti the prefix. Okay. So the prefix is something that goes in front. Well, in science, we don't usually, we're not talking about noun verbs and adjectives and stuff like that. We're talking about base units. Okay? So a base unit. What's a base unit? The base? Okay. It's a unit that sings really low. The regular one. What's a regular one? What do you mean a regular one? Okay, so it's a it's a uh, unit without a. I'm gonna put prefix and I'm gonna put parentheses. Power, because Moses, you remember from yesterday that the prefix is aligned to a certain power, don't they? Okay, so it's a unit without a prefix. That's a base. Okay, now what are some base units we might know of that that don't have prefixes? Meters. Meters. So M is meters, right? What else? What's some other base units without prefixes? Seconds. Perfect. You're looking down at the table, aren't you, Kim? Cheater. Just joking. Being resourceful. Yeah. Anything else? Grams. Grams. Nice. Not graham crackers. Grams. G R A M S. Anything else? We got meter. Leader! Okay, leader. Kilograms! That's not a base unit. That's where, that's where that table is going to confuse you. Okay? Because the table right there, those are the ones that are our standard units. Okay? That's where this one's going to go wrong. They call it base units here. These are our standard units. So when you measure a mass in the science, the standard unit, the unit everybody agrees to use or try to report the data in, is kilograms. Unless the mass is really, really small, and then we'll start using stuff like grams or milligrams or, or uh, you know, yoke or zeptograms or peptograms, whatever, however big the, the, uh, the mass is. Okay. Anything else? Any other base units? Can we scroll up here so you guys can see? What else do you see? Amps. Amps. Okay, ampere. Electric current. Anything else? A mold. Get a little chemistry on us. Maybe chemistry is getting a little physics y. It depends on who you talk to. Okay. What? Kelvin? Kelvin? Good. What's Kelvin? Temperature. Okay. Not degree Kelvin, just Kelvin. Anything else? What's the last one? CD, what's that? Call a candela. Sounds like a candle. Okay, it measures light. Right. Now, these base units, these are units that don't have prefixes on them. Okay. Now, if I add like kilo to any one of these, okay, what is it doing to that to that uh, measurement essentially, or that unit? It's making, it's making it bigger, right? It's a thousand times bigger now, isn't it? Okay. So those prefixes change change those units. 
So by adding a prefix to the base unit, we change the number by the corresponding power of 10 without changing the measurement. So by adding a prefix to a base unit, we change the number by a power of 10, well, not a, it should be the, by the power of 10, that corresponds to that prefix. Now, do we change the measurement? Do we change the measurement? No. This is without changing the measurement. Without changing the measurement. Has everybody used one of these before? What is it? A ruler. Okay, the ruler. One side measures in centimeters or millimeters, right? The other side it measures in inches. Okay. Now, if I put this ruler up here and I do a measurement, oh, it's up there. Now this line right here is 30 on this ruler. 30 what? Centimeters, perfect. Okay. 30 centimeters. Right? What else is it? 12 inches. Approximately, we'll go with that. Okay. Approximately 12 inches. Okay. What else is it? One foot, okay. One foot. Like synonyms for science right here, right? Not cinnamon for science, cinnamon. I know cinnamon is tasty. What else is it? 0. 0.3 meters. 0. 0.3 meters, how'd you get that? One third of a meter. Okay, so now we're kind of converting between feet and meters, but the easy thing is 30 centimeters. There's 100 centimeters in a meter, right? So it's really 0.3 meters with 30 centimeters, right? What else is it? 300 millimeters. 300 millimeters. Anything else? Oh, need another M there. It's 3 times 10 to the negative fourth kilometers. Anything else? There's tons of them, right? right we, could work, we, could, we could go megameters. We could go gigameters. We could do any prefix we want. We could do some zeptometers if we wanted to, right? But when I change these prefixes, or even when I change to a different unit based on a conversion, am I changing that length? No, it's still the same exact length, right? If I put this rule up here and I call it, and I call it 3 times 10 to the negative 4th kilometers, it doesn't all of a sudden make it smaller than my ruler, right? It's still 30 centimeters, okay? So by changing the prefixes, are we changing the measurements? No. The measurements are staying the same. They do not change. Okay. The only thing we're changing when we change the prefix is we're just changing how many zeros we're showing, right? 30 centimeters has one zero. Uh, 0.3 meters, no zeros, right? I'm basically changing the location. Oh, crap, put myself on. All right, guys. Okay. 
I'm basically changing, I'm just changing the location of my decimal point. Right? That's all I'm doing. Right? But I'm not changing, I'm not changing the length of them. Okay? So that video we watched the other day, the powers of 10 video, they kept zooming out on that blanket, right? Right? Did that blanket change from a meter as they zoomed out? No, it's still a meter, right? What happened? Okay, so the view of the lens got bigger, right? Right? It was, just, it was showing you how each prefix relates to the base unit. Okay? It's kind of giving you an idea. Okay? Remember we said like one, what was it, one gigabyte or one tera? One terameter is like the radius of our inner planets in our solar system compared to one meter. One meter is like the length, is like, like half the length of your table, maybe two thirds the length of your table is one meter. And one terameter is the radius of the solar system, essentially. Okay. It's a big difference there, isn't there? Okay. The whole idea was that was to show you that the prefixes, how the prefixes relate to each other in terms of size. Right. But as I go through the prefixes, if I write 30 centimeters a number of different ways, I'm not changing my measurement. It's still just 30 centimeters. Okay. Does that make sense? Now let's say I have a number. Let's say I have a number. Let's say it's uh, one. We'll go with one million meters. One million meters. What would be an appropriate prefix to use for one million meters? Now I know I took my I know I took my prefix table down. Do you guys want to check out page six in your textbook? Okay. Where they have a prefix table. One mega, one giga, what is it? One mega? One mega is times 10 to the sixth, right? Yeah. So if I do mega, so one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Right? So I had to move, I had to move my decimal point, point six spaces, right? So I could just write this as one. Megameter. Notice that M is capitalized. Right? Does that make sense, guys? What if I had one that's like this? 0. 0.000001. What would this be? And we'll call it uh, Candelas. Just for fun. What would be an appropriate prefix for that one? Micro, you sure? Let's count. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So a six micro? Okay, that's a negative six, wouldn't it be? Right? This would have an exponent of positive six. Right? That's what this one would be. And this one would be one times ten to the negative six candelas, which is a micro. Right? Let's try one that's kind of in between. About 10,000 liters, don't make that be. What's an appropriate one for that? Appropriate prefix for 10,000 liters. What do you guys think? Any guesses? No. Okay, kilo might work, right? Because this is one, two, three, right? Kilo is three. So it's like 10 times 10 to the third. That's like 10 kiloliters, right? Could I also go one step up with that one? What's the one above kilo? Mega, right? What's mega? Negative six or positive six, right? So I went three. If I go four, five, six, can I also do 0.01? Megaliters, right? Which one are you more comfortable with? 10 or 0 0.01? 10, that's what I thought. So this one's probably the most appropriate one. But 0 0.01 mega could work. Does that make sense? Evan, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's, let's try some examples. Okay. Super excited about this, aren't you guys? Back to the example, Prezi.
I'm so proud of myself when it comes to this example for the idea. <laughs> no, I did not, because it's more fun if I don't check the spelling. We all had a good laugh yesterday, didn't we? Oh, man, it was it was a bunch of words that I just was not typing appropriately because I was so tired. Later on, there was a slide where I just had tired typed on it. Like, it's like, what, just what I was thinking. All right.